I get a lot of criticism that I only care about the beginner experience or the pro experience, that I don't really care about ranks below mine outside of total noobs. Maybe that's where the content is focused, but I think that it, the intermediate area is so difficult to teach because people have all gotten there in different ways. People are all encountering different issues with their opponent's tech and gameplay. It's hard to make generalized tips like learn a punish, break a throw when everybody could have different issues. Like a Yoshimitsu player stuck in blue rank might be dealing with different issues than a Dragonov player in blue rank, than a Fang player, than a King player in blue rank. So in general, it's hard to make general content for that. But I had a client who had previous experience in a game in Super Smash Bros. Melee. And because of that, he kind of knew what questions he wanted to ask. Now in part one, this is part two of a two-part coaching session. Uh, in part one, we talked about his specific questions, like how do you learn a matchup? What's important information in Tekken? And uh, how do you beat internal flow charting? If those are interesting topics to you, check out part one. In part two, we look at his gameplay specifically, and it ends up leading into these general problems that I see at the intermediate level. So we talk about what does look at the screen mean, right? People will tell you, like a high level player would be like, look at the screen, hit your buttons. What does that actually mean? We talk about like, what does throwing out your moves really mean? Like use your buttons. What does that look like? We talk about my favorite piece of advice for anybody below tech and god is using your frame traps and then we talk about leveraging your points of frustration against opponents right like if you're frustrated by something that your opponent's doing chances are there's a clue there on how you could be playing so if these are interesting topics uh, let me know in the comments uh, i want to cover more intermediate stuff especially as tekken is kind of going past its first year tons of beginners the people who are sticking around are the ones that really need information i'm gonna try to put it together for you guys so hope you enjoy you know what an elevator pitch is? It's like, so when you're in an elevator and you have only that pr amount of time to pitch something to somebody who will buy it. Right. You uh, got like it's like the 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah. And I, I have tried to every character, like, what do they want? Oh, and I, and I know Tekken's a deep game yeah. and I get that. But Kuma, Kuma wants to be hunting bear stance in front of you, you know, in terms of, in terms of like, Everyone wants to launch you, sure. Right. But Kuma wants to be plus in all f on all fours in front of you because right. he's freaky. What is the, so what does like Lily want? That's a good question. I want to answer that by saying I don't want to mislead you. And even sure. for me, who's played this game for a while and played the series for a while, I think more granularly than that. So not what do they want to do in terms of strategy necessarily or like broad strokes. It's like what problem moves am I looking for? Like, what do I tend to die to the most that I need to keep an eye out for? So, like, when we watched the Lily replay, she was doing a lot of this, right? Giant homing, advancing high, right? So that's one problem move. She was hop kicking a lot. That's another problem move. And then she okay. was doing stuff that went into back turn, whether it's this or this. I like to think of it from a moves perspective more than a general strategy perspective. Especially, so it's not just like she wants to be in back turn. It's just, it's just more than that. And I, it's just better to think in the terms of like that granular. At least I think for the development stage, yes. When you're like a tournament level player, you can probably think in like broad strokes, like she's going to go into back turn. How do I, what are my, what are my answers to that? But because people are still figuring out their character themselves, they're likely to repeat situations a lot. So whether it's this mm. one over and over into back turn, whether it's one, one into back turn, you'll see that enough that you may just be incentivized, like, how do I answer 1-1? One, one? How do I answer down 1-2, right? Down 1-2 is 18 frames at the low. I can duck it. I can interrupt it. I can hop kick it myself, you know? Like, because by the time she's in back turn with a legitimate mix, you are guessing rather than having control over the situation, right? So, like, right, okay. if we're at this distance and she does dash up down 1-2, for example, the answer isn't just, what do I do once she's in back turn? It's, can I just interrupt her dash up? You know, she's not blocking if she's walking up to me, right? She's picking a slow move. Let me just poke her, right? You can play like ranges and keep out and like whiff punish more than you can just focus on guessing the right mix up on what they wanted to do, right? Like maybe she whiffs in the open like that. Like, that's cool. I like that. Thank you for that. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. like uh, yep. tons of ways to approach it outside of how do I like, it's not just how do I deal with what they want to do to me? How do I, how can I prevent it? And I think thinking of move by move or just the key threatening moves gives you nuggets of ways to eventually build a strategy right so like when i'm fighting a lily she honestly has so much i want to fight her with my character as best as i can like like beat her up as much as possible without dying to this without dying to this <laughs> 
and uh yeah what else she has like a crazy good armor move and without dying to this i'm counter hit so i will fight i will play my character with those moves in mind and then based on what she shows me i will start to adjust like maybe she loves doing this sidestep move in the back turn i can like pay attention to the sidestep and either track it or block and then play the situation after. Part of the reason you see so many like mashy players succeed at the highest ranks is because they are so comfortable with what their character wants to do that they can plug and play where the opponent gets to interact and deal with those as it comes, right? So like people will run their huge flow chart, back up, because they know they have to back up there and then whiff punish if you miss or continue offense if you don't. I actually think that's a good way to develop because by understanding your character better, you reduce the amount of infinite options your opponent can throw at you right like that blank canvas thing a toddler can mix you up you want oh, to still reduce the points of interaction they can give you and you can still get to make really good defensive plays like if you're jabbing lily a bunch and she gets tired of it and her answer happens to be sidestep hop kick then maybe you do something like jab 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 block and you baited that right right but you're I still see. doing it with an offensive approach instead of waiting here hoping that you have a good download on her trillion different options <laughs> that she can do that are yeah. all valid, like, and scary, you know? And there's an intentionality to that. Yeah. Using the offense rather than block. Yeah. Sit and block too much. And in terms of structuring that offense, lean towards, like, frame traps. Situations where you can frame trap are really, really good for getting intel and just playing solid. Like, this is just straight solid Tekken. So, like, if I put the opponent on standing block and then punish, set her to hop kick, right? Because that was the annoying shit hunting bear if i do anything slow i get hop kicked right so maybe i'll just stick to frame traps see if they even block in the first place vdx combo and then go from there right i think there's an armor move that one's also pretty good let's see so three plus four is armor move it's uh minus 12 and it actually can go under some shit which is pretty cool your best bet probably i think what i see the most is just the the one right get a float yeah, and then you can see, like, maybe they get tired of dealing with that. They're a power crush user, right? So you just do this, block their power crush, and then punish, you know? That, like, do a move after blocking tool I actually don't use. Yeah, so. I think it's good to develop your frame trap game, right? So, like, Kuma has... Two, two plus three. Okay. This, yeah. Plus five, right? The double electric, you know, shit like that. It's good for the initial, like, how do I frame trap against the jab? How do I frame trap against the hop kick? Will it beat a rage art? That kind of stuff. Mm. And then, but you can also just like steal it, like what you see from good players. So, like, do you watch uh, like Rangchu and. Yeah, I watch Sour Piggy a lot, nice. actually. He's pretty, he's sick. Both of those players, I think, are really, really good at kind of running bear stuff and watching how the opponent will deal with it or respond to it. But based again on watching the replay against the Lily, there was a lot of nonsense happening, but the, the HP damage came from the hop kick. So, right, like, if you played yeah. to mitigate the hop kick, so you asked, like, what does Lily want to do? That's a broad answer, but one of the threats she wants to represent or like hit you with is the hop kick. So you can structure your play around specific threats. And that would be a good example here. Let me pull up another one and see if we can extrapolate that general, like what do they want to do or what is killing me? And then how do I address that? And then in your notes, you can just boil it down to that. Like, I know they're going to hop kick. Let me deal with that. You know, Heihachi is pretty tough. Heihachi. Cool. Let's do a later one. You said Hayachi's tough, but you, you beat the shit out of him. So why did it work? Let's take a look. Somebody said no move is bad. That is definitely a lie. There are really shitty moves in Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Every move does have an ideal situation, probably. But they're often overshadowed. Okay, so 1-1-1. One, one, one. Stopping him from playing in the first place. Yeah. That's a... There we go. I messed it up. That's okay. Yeah, also, if you're interested in the Jesus... Yeah, this is a, if you played against the Lily like this, she gets cooked. <laughs> I think um, if you enjoy that exploring the defensive side of Tekken, uh, that makes sense why you would pick Nina because the bear not having access to sidestep kind of or they do have access, but having less it, access to it sidestep. It was like playing the other half of the game switching to Nina. Yeah, it yeah. It was crazy. Nina is interesting because she has the one of the most full toolkits ever like in the game right so like she has an answer to everything and that can add a lot of mental stack so i haven't watched your nina but if you're really interested in kind of the bare bones tekken where you're like do my threats observe what they're doing answer what they're doing i think dragonov and claudio are like the peak for those it's strong high coverage and simple 
So you mm. get to move past the what does my character do phase as quickly as possible in many situations. And you get to have a lot of control running your offense as well. So that like in the same way that you're playing with the bear here, you get to do that plus having sidesteps, plus having like nice movement and whiff punishes and stuff like that. Right. So like here, honestly, you're you're cooking this guy. The few points of optimization I can think of, like you do down jab. And then you try to hit a button. You're minus five, so he outspeeds you. <laughs> and then forward two, four, we hit a button in between the string. None of this is bad on its own. It's just something you want to recognize. Like, okay, he's going to finish the string. He's going to mash on my down. Oh, we'll get cooked. Uh, yeah, like, I don't yep. think mashing there is inherently bad. It's how you adjust to it. So, like, the fact that you got caught doing that there, it's uh, avoid it next time to mitigate the damage, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, there is a there is a shame I feel in beating someone without feeling like I learned anything. And what I've tried to do to remedy that is like write down something I learned in uh -huh. that match. You know, just any observation rather this, than just mindlessly go again. This may or may not alleviate that shame, but I feel like have you have you run a melee set where somebody asks you for advice and you don't really know what to say? <laughs> No. No? Okay. Because because I think there's always, in Melee, I've just played it for so long. There's always something. Yeah. There's always literally, I was like, you, you keep letting me hit you. Like, sometimes it's that simple. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you keep letting me hit you. And I think in Tekken, it can be that way too. Sometimes you win because they just didn't know how to block. They, like, like, like they did not know how to yeah. resist your default. You know, they did not know how to survive against you on the screen. And sometimes it really is that simple. In the matches where you feel like you beat somebody without learning anything, I would say pick like the things that were like hitting you or like where you felt like you got blown up. But you can honestly save that mental space to go next and like encounter deal with and encounter a real like serious problem that's actually stopping you, you know? So this match with the Reyna right now, I just destroyed her two uh two games in a row. Right. She didn't she didn't do that forward forward two or whatever once. Yeah. That was the first time she did this in this game. Uh-huh. And that is weird to me. Yeah, that is weird. That's very the fact odd. that, yeah, like, as a, as a game, she didn't get to play because I did a lot of stuff to prevent that for two games straight. I think I'd lose this set. Yeah. So it's just I mean, kind of funny. That's what I want to see, because, like, you cooked him. Here you wake up and duck. That's fine. That's just a 50-50. Duck again, just a 50-50. Oh, that was... So <laughs> I said, surely. <laughs> okay, so there's the second hit of the string there. And we tried to down one. See, I'm so, pressing. Similar pattern, yeah, from the Heihachi is just a two hit string being in between. Okay, and that's she's... Reyna. I know Reyna. And I still did that. <laughs> yeah. That's the weird part. Which means I don't really know her if I'm just like mindlessly, you know, that feels bad. Electric. Okay, she armors through it. So one adaptation immediately is you can convert this. Like if you see somebody doing this to you, this can become electric into like grab. Right. Right. Electric into grab. Electric into a quick low or something, or electric into block and punish. Right. Your plus frames give you initiative. Like I think pressure can be a nebulous term, but having plus frames that incentivize your opponent to try to mash out of a potential mix-up is one form of pressure. And so seeing right. that she responded to pressure with armor is a good, like, uh, that's a t yeah, something yeah. to think about. Yeah. And then seeing also like, like you lean a lot towards like really punishable mids, which gives them free damage. That is another point of like optimization where like there are ways to hit them without doing a mid that guarantees them free damage after. Damn, damn. Oh, this is unlucky. So, like, just recognizing a sidewall and pulling your offense back is good. Oh, we also hit forward in here. <laughs> so, in most situations where this happens, like, they're having a sidewall, either your combo hits, which is good, your combo drops, which is scary, and they get a guaranteed hit, or the combo drops and you can kind of, like, play still. In most yeah. of these situations, I just block. Sure. Because in Tekken, if a combo drops and it's not, like, a clean wall ender or a clean, like, Okazemi situation, your opponent usually has first action. So you did forward heat smash, which is still pretty fast, and it lost to her 15 frame move. So one thing I can already think about is like, 
that question three, I think, ended up becoming more relevant than I thought it would be, like combating internal flowcharts. Your instinct tends to lean towards button, which is fine if it's like a bit more like intentional, right? Forcing yourself to block entire strings and then punish is going to be a good exercise, I think, because it gives you more animation recognition. It helps to improve your like punish sense and it gives you string intuition that you can carry across to multiple characters if you force yourself to block the two to four hits. I think if you run the, the move list drills and the punishment drills, you will get a lot out of the game that I think you're looking for. Because all the damage you're taking is... Wow, damn. Damn! A couple things, like getting hit in between strings is a consistent issue, and then... Uh, seeing where you're taking most of your HP damage. And so the replay analysis you're already doing is going to help with that. But also the punishment drills will give you specific things to be like, oh, sweet, I get free damage here. And then get your dopamine and naturally bring your attention to the opponent a bit more. How long do you think it took you? I mean, but you, you guys didn't have like good tools back then, right? It yeah. was more of like a mysterious journey. But like, I guess, how long did you play for before you felt really comfortable in the game? wholesale that's a good question i feel like it's so character dependent for me so like me on my main and i i don't think i'm alone in this i think most people on their main character you start to develop tons of intuition around the millions of moves in the game right like millions of situations and moves and slight micro variances that you need to be comfortable with and then you put me on a side character and i look like i'm clueless like i've never played the game in my life so i think <laughs> it's an ongoing thing and it's built on how much you can forget about your character to start looking at the other character Mm. Right, okay. This down back four, I think, like, as you develop more bear comfort, you will just know instinctively that after you block, like, a two hit string like this at this pushback, this will whiff. So you won't even consider that move. So you won't even be put in a situation where this would be a problem, right? right. You'll just know, like, okay, this is going to whiff. I'm not even going to. That move is not even in my brain or in my hands. You know, I think that's the level of intuition that gives you the bandwidth to run better defense and like duck more strings and like block punish more things. It's like that kind of comfort. I didn't even think about it being a pushback issue. Uh-oh, how's slime get out of this jam? Okay, ducked. Uh, the third the third hit of this string is a mid, so this is a scary duck. He just happened to cancel it. <laughs> I thought it was a goat. Boom. <laughs> I mean, you beat him, so or you, you, you killed him there, so that goat in play for sure. The fire read. And then like here, like you'll get more comfort and understand like this combo doesn't follow up. And then this launcher never happens, you know, or yeah. this heat engage never happens. Or like maybe here, for example, you get comfortable enough that you finish this string because you know that this dude's a masher. I'm not saying I knew he was a masher. It's just like that's one point of like. That's a tool is finishing strings. Yeah, yeah. Just like you're comfortable doing full screen moves that are like, oh, that sucks. That's just an inaccuracy. Oh, I, I, I feel you. I feel no, those yeah. inputs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. Um, I know I've, I've talked a lot, so let me leave you with one like concrete nugget too. Your Kuma offense has a lot of like, Hail Mary is the wrong word because it's not like you're in a losing position. It's just kind of like a, huh, YOLO does this hit. Yeah, a lot of big swings. Yeah, and we can think about our offense in a way, and, and this might inform how you watch like Sour Piggy and Rank Chu and see like how are they getting people to run into their big hits, right? Like Rank Chu is so good at hitting this out of the blue, down 4 2 1. But the reason he's so good at it is because he'll back up to a space where they have to challenge him, and then it'll hit, right? He has a good timing read. And you get some of those, but other times you back up and they weren't even concerned about hitting you in the first place. They were chilling out too. The the tempting bear thing is to constantly run like stuff like this because you get a bunch of chip, you get a bunch of threat. Try and see what happens. Like, do they do they try to interrupt? Are they just going to hold the chip damage? You can just build a lot of damage off chip and never even have to risk your life with something like this, right? Then minus 19, they get a guaranteed launch. And even if they don't launch it, the Reyna was getting free like down forward one, two, right? If you never give them this opportunity and you just run like jabs and chip, like if they're stand blocking, you hit them with the, what is this? Shitty ass low. These are, these have a place, right? Like if you're getting them to duck, you get this, you know, or just single hop kick, I guess. Playing that like, I know they're going to block. Let me run the mid low is nice. And yeah, then okay. instead like replacing this and this with back forward two is probably going to do a lot of work for you too. If you look at like high level bear play, they're, they're, they're putting this out 
not even with the intent of it necessarily hitting. It's just like, <laughs> you have to get around this. <laughs> yes. It's like a Falco laser type move, actually, now that I think about it. It's like, while they're trying to play the game with you, boom. You know, like, are you can you can you get between this? Can you block it? And if it counter hits, the reward is crazy, right? You get a full combo, so. So less big, giant moves. I think, too, what I just took from what you were saying as well is, like, every move gives information, even if it's a jab, even if it's, like, a not a launcher. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Everything gives information. information they did not duck good. this. Oh, they mashed me out of this. Let me just do this, right? And then this, too. You do single one. Uh, you can charge this. This is, like, like, this shit is so hard to deal with. I am so free to this because I don't lab enough. So this into this is hilarious because if your opponent is kind of like, I don't know what he's going to do in bear stance. I'm just going to block. You do this, you get free chip. If they decide to mash, this floated them, right? Like the answer to this is probably very difficult for a lot of newer people to deal with. And then going into this charge is so effective. The other thing is, yeah, from bear stance, run your lows, right? That one is back. You, you collect the data. Like this is the big cash out and it's the like, yeah, got him. But if they're mashing or if they're stand blocking, you get a lot of nothing out of it. So just as you are frustrated by lows being a way to break guard, leverage that yourself. Right. The okay. points of frustration that you have are probably common, right, to other people. It's funny, too. Like, Kuma to Nina to Kuma is, is like, it's such a, a sun and a moon situation. Because Nina is like, dude, she has so many good moves. Yeah. Lows. Everything. Yeah. And Kuma is like, his lows are, he's got some good, he's got a, a safe low, which is rare. He's yeah. got some cool, he's got some fun stuff, but it's like, I don't know. There is an intentionality with Kuma that I felt like I was losing when I played Nina because she's just so fast and cool. Right. It's like Fox. So I'm sort of back on this journey of like, let's like relearn the game. Yeah. I think keeping your offense a bit tighter so you're not taking free damage after is going to be a, a big start to immediately letting you play more of the game and see more of the game. Okay. There are ways you can throw out big moves, mainly back forward two. Back forward two, they have to hard duck it. And if they're hard ducking, they're free to all of your, any mid you like, right? By keeping your offense tighter, you take less damage. By improving your punishment, you start to see more, you start to get free damage. You just get to play more of the game. I don't think there's anything wrong with the games where you just steamroll people. I think that's actually totally fine. It's important to pay attention to when you try that and it doesn't work. Or why are you not trying that? Why are there, are there games where you don't have access to that steamroll? Like, what does that look like? You know? Right. Let's look at Lydia, actually, because Lydia can be really oppressive. This was this is late enough in the night to where they they throw the t the Bushins, the Tekken gods, and they're like, all uh, right, figure it out. I see. One point of optimization here is if you don't finish this whole thing, you get a combo, right? So you can just maximize more damage by not doing the full hop kick stream. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think she would eat the hop kick in general, and right. sometimes they'll press on the third one. Right. I like this. I like, like, this is fine. Jab him out, low into armor, cooked him, unlucky that you trade with the low. So here, here's a point of interaction that uh, you already have. You can try your running bear move right here. Right, she does her running move, right, just a bit later. So, mm -hmm. It's a reasonable attempt to joust this here and see, does she sidestep? Does she challenge me? Like, what happens? But here we kind of block, and now we're in her situation. She's plus six. Now we're in her stance situation. The counterplay to this stance, by the way, is you can down jab every option except the one where she jumps. And that option, you can standing jab or just block. So you have... You can streamline it that way. Uh, here, How is she good if that's the solution to her... <laughs> To her core mechanic. A good Lydia player will probably just cancel the stance and see if you down jab in the first place. Like, they can collect data too while they're doing it. Uh, but this Lydia player just plays the power crush right away, right? So, But yeah, how is she good? She's not that good. She's just, like, obnoxious. Like, when she is steamrolling you, it feels terrible. And then when she's not able to start, she feels terrible. So it's just kind of a weird design. Here on this tech roll, this Lydia player is already doing her attack, right? So this is a good position to block in, usually, off a tech roll. And if you are going to mash, it would probably be, like, a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Or an armor move. Yeah, that's so interesting because I'm not even looking at her. <laughs> like that's that's a prime example of like I'm looking at my own bear. Yeah. He's rolling. I'm like I should get up and do something. She's already doing a move. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put something that is gonna sound patronizing, but is advice I often have to follow, which is look at the screen. <laughs> no real shit, dude. It's such a. <laughs> it's so crucial. <laughs> The whole damn screen. Yeah, nice duck. I like that. 
And then here, there's like, a, she does a one, two, and then we hit a button, I think, or do we duck? Oh, we just duck. Okay, that's fine. That's an annoying, legitimate thing she can do is mix one, two, two with one, two, four. Annoying. Yeah, I like this stuff. So like, this is fine. It worked. This is unsafe. So if she decided to block, she died. Or you get, you eat a punish, you're in her mix up, stuff like that. You can, this could easily be a jab or a one, one, you know? Right, yeah. But it's 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 fine. I don't want to discourage you from always doing it. It's just be aware that, yeah, there's a risk there. And then same thing here. You get this plus frame situation. Right? And then we pick a slower option, and she is, has no intention of blocking. She decides she wants to hit a button. So that's data for if you were to rematch or next time you run the situation. But in general, I think default... Oh! <laughs> I think defaulting to the frame trap is good. Especially at okay. this level. I think Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it becomes honestly very high up where you default to a mix up instead of the frame trap. And then here she's running stances, we just have to block. When she goes into this, this this move is way too slow to interrupt. Nice block. So ideally you get your turn back after this. Oh my god. Here she's minus seven, and yeah, there's a lot going on on the screen, right? But uh this is a mid. It's the end of her stance transition. A single jab here outpaces her because you're like seven plus seven, right? That's so crazy. Yeah, let it be known, I did instantly click rematch. I didn't. I don't care about some points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't worth the time. <laughs> Yo, Bori TTV. Sorry. Yo. <laughs> okay, so let's recap. We talked. Most efficient way of learning a matchup, kind of walked you through that process. Knowledge journey of Tekken, kind of in broad strokes. And I think we're on the same page mostly. So in terms of combating the flow charts, I would just add, yeah, like look at the opponent and set an intention with with what you want to break, right? Yeah, like play this play this match without doing X move or I can only do it once <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, in, in your specific case, the intentions I would probably look to set is like let my opponent always finish their string. Let me right. see what those strings are, right? Combining that with your move list exploration and punish drills will help a lot. Reducing the YOLO does this hit with unsafe moves, and you can do YOLO does this hit with safe moves, right? So you can YOLO with like back forward two. The armor move back one is a better YOLO than forward forward two. So I don't want to write it down just yet, but if you were to do that, that would be a good one. You can YOLO the running one plus two, honestly. By doing that, and running frame traps, you will you will see a lot. Cause because how many times did you do running one plus two and they just mashed out of it, right? Right. That's a good top two priority list, I'd say. Or like top three. It's like force yourself to block entire strings, YOLO the safer moves, and then frame trap when you can. How does that sound? Sounds good. Sweet. Sounds like it all makes sense. All right. I'll be sure to send you all these notes too. Uh cool. And yeah, thanks for coming on. This is pretty cool. I love talking with melee players, especially too, because I think, like you said, the game doesn't have super obvious points of like, like you cannot do this because of this. You can't just shield all, you can't just stand block all day because lows exist. But melee has like multiple answers to specific things outside of maybe like when you're getting comboed, what DI do you pick, right? But like, even then. Yeah, melee is like, that got this mysterious element to it. Also, most of the, well, the people my age and stuff have like played it as a kid's like a party game first. Right. So you have to like shed that and yeah. then relearn it as a fighting game and then be good at learning in general. And if you're not, you're just shit forever like me. So it's like <laughs> there's so <laughs> there's so many steps on the journey. But Tekken, you load in, there's a training mode that has answers for you, which was so I was like, oh, my God. This is crazy. Yeah. It's I, such a new experience to have the game have tools for you yeah, to learn. Yeah, because, like, Uncle Punch is a relatively new thing, right? So, like, yeah. the idea... And, and that's where I think the relatable part comes between Tekken and Melee is even with all the training resources now, there's so much value in getting in a game with somebody and being put through the same wake-up situation over and over, being put through the same combo over and over, right? And learning to DI yep. and stuff like that. And I think Tekken has a lot of that where... Because of the fluidity and like breadth of options, there is an element of like, I'm going to get beat up by this over and over until I figure it out. Like I got hit by the same setup from speeds, speed kicks is Horong for like a week before I figured out how to deal with it. And it's like, it's not <laughs> yeah. that I didn't know it's, I had to be under the same duress in that situation while trying to hit him to figure out how to make that adjustment, you know? Right.
Um, cool, and then, yeah, man. as you theory craft things uh, or like try to structure your offense, I think the last thing is, yeah, like think about the things that frustrate you and think about how you can do it to your opponent. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, do you have any uh, last questions or things you want to chat about? No, nope, it's all makes sense. Cool. I will send these over. Thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah, message me anytime if you have questions. I'm happy to just casually answer or hop on a call if you want. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. Cheers, bro. Catch you next time. All right. See ya.